Hey you guys, it's Peter. My camera is at 100% battery, so I can talk for hours and hours and hours. Oh my God. And it is 1.49 in the morning and I'm just starting my vlog. And this is your Sunday, but for me, it is Saturday late night. And um, actually had a really good day. Alex and I got up today and he is like <sighs> planning this trip to Thailand for us. Excuse me. Which is really good because typically I'm like such a control freak and I'm just like, you plan it. He found some guy that's like Spanish speaking. I don't know where the guy's from, but anyway, and he was like watching all of his videos. He's some YouTuber that went to Thailand for a year and so he showed like all this stuff and Alex like was like fanatically watching like all of these videos this morning and um, showing me stuff and he was like, wouldn't this be so great to go here and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I don't think it's, I don't feel ethical or I don't feel right about riding an elephant, but here you go and you feed them and you walk with them and, um, cause I wouldn't feel right about that either. So anyway, and Monkey Island that somebody suggested he was looking that up and all of these things that people had told us. And then I, so he's planning this trip. So he's like super excited about it. Probably the end of, I don't know, September, early October, something like that we're looking at. But that would be really, really fun, I think. And um, yeah, I would vlog the whole thing. So can you even imagine? Oh, speaking of which, a lot of people have been telling me that on all of my channels that they're getting unsubscribed. So could you guys do me a huge favor? This would mean a lot to me. Can you go and make sure that you're subscribed and it will say subscribed and then make sure that you hit the notification bell so you get notified on my channels. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to watch the videos. It just means that you're subscribed to it if, so it comes up. Um, that would mean the world to me. I'd like to buy the world a Coke. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about on here um, was, okay, so I'm really good friends with a certain YouTuber. I'm trying to say this because I don't know how ambiguous they want it to be, um, but I'm really good friends with a certain YouTuber who called me today really just to talk to somebody and um, really neat guy. And um, has gone through a totally devastating situation with his family where his um, brother-in-law, okay, so his mother-in-law, brother-in-law and the baby and their baby, I think and sister-in-law were in a car and they were hit in a car accident. It was not their fault. They were hit in a car accident. And then, um, I mean, it's so tragic, you guys. The whole story. He told me the whole story on the phone. And not just for this reason that I'm going to tell you, but also because I just, you know, he was talking to me a lot about, you know, just tragedy that's been in their lives and whatever. So the mother, I think, was in the front seat and, like, reached into the back seat after the accident. And the baby, this is an infant, was bleeding in the head. And so she was, like doing something like getting a coat or something to like cover the baby up when this other girl came and she hit like all the cars that had been in the accident because she was texting and um, so then the mother flew out of the window and was killed instantly and um, they're really struggling to come up with money for the baby who is in intensive care as well as um the funeral costs for the mother. <clears throat> so he asked me, he was very humble about asking me. He wasn't pushy about it. And, I, and I'm gonna be really honest with you. I get asked to do this quite a bit. <clears throat> I get asked by a lot of people to do like shout outs and um, you know, these kinds of things. And you guys, the, one of the reasons why, he asked me to link the GoFundMe account and I'm going to do it. And I'm gonna tell you why, because he means something to me. He's a really neat young man, and <clears throat> he has just been hit hard with lots of tragedy. And I think, you know, like we talked in here about the Wolf Pack, 
you know, all of us doing something good every day. And so for us, I think to help out a little bit would be really nice. You know, even if it's just $5 you know, or a dollar. Um, I think we sometimes take for granted how much a dollar or five dollars could really help. This is not for me. I don't gain anything from this, okay? This is for his family. And um, it's 100% legit, I believe. You know, you can go look at the, the GoFundMe account. I'll link it underneath here. But um, please do not inundate me with GoFundMe accounts. Um, I don't ever post them. I get asked quite a bit. And it's not because I don't feel for you. And it's not because I don't want to help people out. It's because that's, A, not what I want my channel to become. And, B, because unless I really have some personal connection that I really know you, um, I think it comes across as really disingenuous. And I, and so, but this one, like, he called me today. I talked to him for over an hour on the phone. I mean, he's just devastated. And they don't know what they're going to do. So, I do feel like this is something that I can stand behind and support. Um... You know, and likewise, if I ever give a shout out in a video, it's because I really adore that person. You know, I've talked about Letty the last couple days and that's because Letty has always been very nice to me and I do stand behind her content. You know, I love her vlogs. Um, if I didn't like her vlogs and I thought they were shit, I would never shout them out in a video. I just wouldn't. And um, it was interesting because like when I got on YouTube and Trisha Paytas and Shane Dawson shouted me out, there were all these accusations that I had paid them for a shout out as if, first of all, what would you even charge somebody like for something like that, you know? But um, I would never be behind something like that. I would never be okay with that or get with it. And I hope people know me well enough by now to know that like I just wouldn't do that. Um, when people send me GoFundMe accounts, I do look at every single one of them. I have a lot of times um, donated money. If I haven't put it on my channel or said something about it, I have donated money typically anonymously. So, um, life's tough, you guys. You know, like, it just is. Back in the day, I used to joke with my friend, this Heather, that girl that I'm friends with, that we were going to start a GoFundMe account for fountain pops and cigarettes when I used to smoke. But, you know, it's hard. Like, life's tough. And I think people just do the best they can. And, you know, like, medical bills and funeral costs and all that stuff are, like, so expensive, you know? When my mom passed away, my mom told me, she said, have a cheap funeral for me. She said, uh, don't have an expensive funeral for me. She said it just isn't important. And um, I literally, and this is just my experience, okay? She did have a funeral home that she wanted to have for her because it was right next to her high school and that was important to her, okay? And that may be why the cost was a little higher. And this was nine years ago. But I literally did everything very cheap on her funeral, you know, from the casket to everything. And it was, I think, $11,000, a little bit over $11,000. and. Um, I, I didn't have the money at the time. And I'll never forget the guy that was the funeral director was very, very nice. But he said, um, I like this was the last thing he said as we were walking out the door. He said, I, I, I just need to let you know that the funeral will not start until we have payment in full. And um, I had a, like two annuities of my mother's that I was like cashing in to pay some bills on the house. And they were not great. They were not a lot of money. Um, I would love to sit here and tell you that I got rich when my mom passed away, but that just wasn't the case. Um, I'm actually one of the only people I know that got into debt by a parent dying um, because of bills of hers that I was not aware of. So I had nobody really, you know, my, my dad could have done it, but I think, like, I didn't really want to ask him and my stepmom and... My mom's one of her very best friends that had been her sorority sister and sorority, you know, in college offered. And she said, you know, I'll just put it on my credit card and you can pay me back. And when you get the, the payment from the annuity, which I did. And, um, but funerals are really expensive, you know, like, I don't know what people do. Like, it's just so sad, you know, because in that time, the last thing that I can tell you, the la I can tell you having gone through it, the last thing you want to think about is how the hell am I going to pay for this? Um, $11,000 is a lot of money, you know? I mean, for a funeral, that's literally over in a couple of hours. But, um, 
you know, Alex and I have very, very differing opinions about funerals. Like, he does not want a funeral. He wants his body donated to medical um, so they can use it for medical research, which is so depressing to me. I don't know why, but that's what he wants, you know, and it's hard for me because, like, I am a believer that funerals are closure for people a lot of times, you know, and, um, but if that's what he wants, you know, for me, I'm a little bit more specific. I think viewings and funerals are closure for people. I really do, you know. Um, I'm a very spiritual person. I think that's part of that, you know. I take every bit of life as... I never carry this bag with me, you guys. Somebody said something about this on my you now stream. Alex bought me this Gucci messenger bag like years ago and I never carry it with me but I keep it like on a chair in the kitchen all the time but somebody I can't remember who bought, bought me this um, Carmex multi-berry chapstick and it was in there and I forgot how much I love this I told Tanya tonight I said I am like becoming completely obsessed with chapstick I need to buy that life insurance that, like, you know, pays for your funeral and you pay, like, $20 a month or whatever. I need to get that life insurance. Is that even a real thing or am I, like, fooling myself? Um, it's just hard, you know? So, today, Alex and I got up and he was playing his trip to Thailand and then I was, like, downstairs putting the vlog together and then he was like, are you hungry? And I was like, no. So, he made chili so, like, Alex has cans of chili with oyster crackers and cheese and stuff, and he makes, like, bowls of chili at home. It cracks me up. It's so something that my mom would have done. So, he made chili, and then I, um, which is so funny what we ended up, I ended up having. And then I went and ran a bunch of errands. I went to, like, I just wanted to have fun today, and I went to, like, four different bookstores, and, um, I had such a great time at the bookstores, and, um... Yeah, it was fun. I went to Goodwill, and I bought, like, four of these teenage thriller books, too, from there. And they were, like, these series that I had never heard of before called, like, Hell High or something like that. Were two of them. The other two, one was about a kidnapping, and the fourth one, I don't know what it was about. They're, like, totally quick reads that you could read, like, in an hour, you know? And I wanted to get them for the summer because I thought that would be a whole lot of fun. And, um... So I got those, and it was like came to like two fifty for four bucks. I love Goodwill. There are all these frogs hopping across the road because of the rain, and I'm like always like I'm like afraid I'm gonna squash them when I'm driving. They're always little frogs that are like that big. But anyway, and then I went to the post office, and then I came home. Oh, I made two videos today too for my main channel, and then um, there's a frog right there. Did I make? I usually can see my rear view mirror if they make it. Um, but I couldn't see that time. So anyway. And then um, I went to... I'm like thinking. Oh, there's a new restaurant here in town. Like, it's not new, but there's a new one by us kind of called Witch Witch. And they're like sandwiches. And I heard it's really good, and I want to try it, but, like, sometimes I get scared of trying something new. And I was like, come on, Peter, try something new, try something new. And, but I got there, and it's right next to Yats, which is, like, this, like, jambalaya creole place that I love. And so I ended up going there, and I got this drunken chicken, which is, like, so delicious. It's real spicy. And, um, then I got, it has French bread, and I got extra bread. And, um, <clears throat> I was talking to Dustin Daly. He's so funny. Um, he did this great video today. Um, I'll link Dustin's channel too. If you guys can go follow him, that would be great. He did this video today, um, like popular YouTubers on that face app where it makes you look how old you are and stuff. And anyway, he's just such a great friend to me. Um, like I, he's somebody that I've, I've talked about him on here before, but like, he's just a really nice guy, you know, just really down to earth and. You know, when I'm sick or not having a good day, like, it's never about the YouTube. It's always just like, hey, how are you doing today? Are you doing okay? Are you feeling better? Or, you know, whatever. I'm back and forth. It's very nice like that, you know? And 
we've been in relationships with our uh, my husband, his boyfriend, about the same time. So I think we relate on the relationship stuff, and we'll talk about that. You know, it's nice to have somebody like that, whether you meet him through the internet or YouTube or in person or whatever. Um, but I was like texting him because I was like I put up that video where I'm like singing to Janet Jackson and I was like should I post this video he was like yes he's always so supportive and I was like this is going to be so stupid but YouTube's an interesting place like you don't really know like when you meet somebody like who you can trust and I'm like ooh a skunk was hit I can totally smell it. Oh, no, I know what I was going to say about Dustin. Oh, man. I know I didn't hit it. Where is that smell coming from? Man, it's strong. Reminds me of that skunk smelly sticker when I was growing up. But anyway, um, Dustin goes, you need to start taking your vlog into, like, Goodwill and places like that and show what you're buying. I was like, oh, I totally should, but my camera was at home being charged. I film so much, you guys, that, like, my camera is always, like, out of battery, and so I always have to kind of, like, you know, repump it up, if that makes sense. So then I got Yats, got d Drunken Chick Chicken, and then Alex was going to a birthday party for his girlfriend tonight, and he asked me if I wanted to go, and I totally didn't feel like it. And they ended up going out to this college bar here in Indianapolis, which is called Brothers, because it was with... Kayla from last night that she was in the singing tip competition and she's young you know and like for Alex it's not that much of an age difference you know 8 or 10 years but for me it's like 20 years age difference I don't I mean and she's sweet but it's just like I, it's just not that fun for me you guys at 44 years old like some people don't understand this it doesn't really affect our relationship so much the age difference but it does like going out like now if I was going to go out to like a loungy club or like a club somewhere where I could dance or whatever but to stand in like a college bar it's called brothers and you know or there's like a Kilroy's here in town too like wherever Everybody's like sitting around watching the game or like doing like these drinking games at tables and they're all 21 and they go to Butler or, you know, like something like, I mean, I just don't relate to that at all. Like that is not fun for me. And, um, so I don't go, you know, it's like, and that's fine. He was like, are you sure you don't care if I go? I was like, no, I'm going to go over to Tanya's anyway. And then, um, Tanya's husband's out of town. So I've been entertaining her. We're going to do a You Now stream, which we did. We had so much fun doing it. And then we started watching that casting, John Bonet, and it was so kind of bizarre that we didn't even end up watching it. And he's been texting me and FaceTiming me all night long. So, And I said, but tomorrow you're all mine. I said, brunch and romance is what I said. And he said, deal, the smiley face. So that's going to be our Sunday. I'm already hungry for brunch and romance. <laughs> I got quite a few people that were like, thank you so much for being honest about the intimacy part of relationships. I mean, I think like, you know, we don't want to talk about that because like then that will mean that videos will not have ads in them or be demonetized and whatever. But it's like, that's such a real part of relationships and marriages, you know? Why would we not talk about that, you know? <clears throat> It's like, I've done couples counseling for so many years. Like, you know, now that I'm doing more executive coaching, I don't do that really. But I've done couples count coaching for so, or couples, you know, counseling and, co and coaching, passions coaching for so many years, which is totally different than when you're in the seat being, you know, having in counseling. It's really interesting and, um, and really eye-opening too about how I behave in the relationship. It's really refreshing, but... You know, there's so many tricks of the trade that, like, when you're sitting as the person, like, with the couple, that, like, they don't see about their own relationship that you see, you know, it's, like, just even, like, dominance and control in a relationship that you always have that one person that's very dominant and, like letting that go and it's interesting because I think a lot of people a lot of times people think that's Alex in our relationship you know and um, and it really isn't you know he's very passive about things and um, but then it flips back and forth you know a lot I think um, I 
I don't know. I think it's interesting. You know, like one of the things I've said for years and years and years is that like, and I don't know if you'll relate to this in your own relationship, but that a lot of couples, this is how they argue. It starts off with something small, like, you know, you didn't put out the cat, you didn't change the cat litter, or you didn't put out the trash, right? And then all of a sudden it, it snowballs and snowballs and snowballs to the point where you're no longer having a fight, the fight is having you. And you don't know when to stop and say, let's stop having this argument. Let's stop having this fight, right? And you don't learn just to shut your mouth. And because you feel like you need to say what you need to say to have that validated. Well, the reality is you don't need to say that always, you know? And, um, you know, just like... And sometimes I think our friends point out things to us that we don't see. Okay, so we were at this concert last night, right? And it was in this bar in the middle of the casino that was like a circular bar. The bar was in the middle and then it was like all these tables around it and then the stage was in front. There is that squirrel. Or that squirrel, that skunk. Can you, why would I smell it so far away unless it was like on that car? Anyway, so when we got there, like Alex was like, I'm gonna go and find Kayla and say hi to her real quick. And I said, okay. And so he had like ordered us drinks and like Tanya loves to drink uh, Virgin Bloody Mary. She loves the taste of them and I got a Diet Coke. So we're sitting there. So we found a table, but there was a couple already sitting at the table and Tanya had, there were two other chairs at the table. Excuse me, these high tables. And um, so we were sitting there and um, then Melissa and Jason came and Alex came and they were all standing there. And I got up to go like walk around for a second because my legs were hurting me. And so I, and it was so packed in this bar, you couldn't even see over people. Well, there were these little ramps on either side that went down to like the casino. So I was like literally standing behind the table, like Tanya and Alex and all them were like right there, I could talk to them. But like Alex kept on looking down and so like, anyway, on our way home last night, Alex was so beat because he had been up since five o'clock in the morning, taking his friend to this doc, the medical procedure, that he said, oh, he was supposed to go to that gala thing tonight. I was talking about that, but she's still sick, so he couldn't take, he didn't, they didn't go tonight. So anyway, but, um, so I dropped, Alex was like, do you mind dropping me off at home and taking Tanya back to her house? I was like, no, that's cool, because Tanya and I will probably sit around for a little bit anyway and talk. So I took Alex home so he could go to bed, and um, then Tanya and I, I drove her home, and then I sat at her house for a little bit before I went home. And um, I think I did the vlog last night late too. But anyway, um, we were like on the way home, and Tanya was like, were you pissed at Alex? And I was like, no. And she was like, well, I think his feelings were hurt. And I was like, why do you think his feelings were hurt? And she was like, well, you wouldn't join us. You kept on just standing down there the whole night. And I was like, Tanya, it was so packed up there. I couldn't see anything. Like, Alex is 6'1". Tanya was sitting on a chair. Jason is like 6'1". Melissa's sitting on a chair. I had nowhere to stand. I'm 5'10", okay? They're standing in front of me. There's people all around. I couldn't see anything. And I get very irritable very quickly. And I have to kind of, and I, listen. I don't talk a lot about this on here, but I have severe social anxiety. Like, people do not believe it. Like, I have to really mask myself to go into a social situation and even be okay. Like, I get very nervous, and then my nervousness kind of turns into irritability a little bit, and it comes across as like an edginess, which is, I don't mean that, I just kind of close into myself because I get very nervous. So like when I used to go out a lot back in the day with like Alex, people would always say to me, what's wrong? And I'd be like, nothing's wrong, what do you mean? And they'd be like, well, you just look like you're upset. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. Like, I'm having a good time. They're like, well, you're not smiling. And I'm like, I'm fine. Like, I'm just sitting here enjoying myself, you know? So anyway, I had a great time last night, you know, and Alex did kind of keep on looking down at me, but then I felt bad about it. I said, well, Tony, he could have come down there and said something to me about it. And she goes, well, really, why is it his responsibility? We were all standing up there. And I said, well, what are you saying? And she goes, I just think it would have been nice if he would have come up there and stood. And, you know, I was sitting down there going, well, why isn't he coming down here and seeing if I'm okay? You know, like, it's just these bullshit games we play. And she's absolutely right. I should have walked my fine ass up there and stood next to my husband, okay? But sometimes we need an outsider to, to shift our perspective, you know, and make it, and make us see what it is we don't see. Does that make sense? So, she was right. She always says right. And that's why I'm so thankful to have her as a friend, you know, and... 
So anyway. But we had a good time nonetheless. And we went and ate last night at this restaurant, which I was, they all wanted to go to the steakhouse there, which was really nice, but it closed at 11. And by the time that the thing got over, it was like 10 till 11. And uh, Melissa and I were both being some uh, B words last night because we were so hungry. I looked at her and I go, are you okay? She said, I'm so hungry. Her and Tanya went and got a hot dog at one point. She's like, I can't wait another hour to go eat. She was like, I want to go eat at the steakhouse. I was like, let's go. I'm not a big steak eater though. Whenever I go to steak houses, I always get like chicken or like a big wedge salad or something like that. I'm not just, I'm just not a big, I mean like don't get me wrong, I love a cheeseburger and that's what I had last night, but. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Whoo! Four deer in the middle of the road right in front of Connor Prairie. As I'm stretching, and I kind of just like looked at him for a second. Did you see that caught on film? I kind of just looked at him for a second. I was like, is this really happening? They were so beautiful. Anyway. Take a deep breath, Peter. And I don't even text and drive anymore. That is one thing that has really come positively for me doing this vlog is that I never text and drive anymore. Not that I should have to begin with, you guys. Never should I. And if you notice, 90% of the time, I don't even look into the camera. I might glance at it for a second, but like I don't look into the camera when I'm driving. And usually if I look, it's just to look and see what time we're at. Because like right now we're at 26 minutes and 45 seconds. But, um, whew, that is one positive thing. Not that I've ever thought that it was okay to text and drive, because I haven't. I think it's absolutely horrible, especially talking about what I was telling you earlier about the teenage girl that um, killed the woman in a car accident, supposedly, allegedly. I guess I have to say that, I don't know, from you know texting. But I don't ever anymore. A couple years ago, Alex and I were at Pride Day, and this girl that he went to high school was there, and she was in a wheelchair, and she was um, paralyzed from like the waist down, and she's real friendly. We were sitting there, she's like in her wheelchair drinking like a sun beer thing, and Alex was like, how are you doing? And she's like, I'm good. He's like, I haven't seen you in forever. And so like, Alex was like, tell Peter about what you do, because he's a social worker. Because at that point, I was working in treatment as a social worker, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I don't, that's not what I do anymore. People ask me that all the time. They're like, do you define yourself as a social worker? No, I don't. So anyway, she was like, I go and I speak to high schools about the dangers of texting and driving. She said, because I was texting, she was texting or some, the girl that hit her was texting and they got into a car accident and that's how she's paralyzed. And so she goes around and she talks about it. And um, she was telling me all about what she says and what she does, and she does these exercises and all this kind of stuff. And, and that she was trying to, at that time to get the law changed. I think in Indiana the law has been changed, and that if you're in a car accident and it has, are there more deer over there? My God, there are deer everywhere tonight. Um, then it's like immediate fault if you're texting and driving. So. That's a really positive thing that's come from this vlog, you know? I don't know, like so many people said something to me that finally I just was like, hey, Peter, you need to take a look at this. Like, this is serious, you know? Now that I'm in a little bit more light, we're coming up on 30 minutes. I'm gonna stop this and then come back on so that I don't, it doesn't run over and just stop on its own. So I'll be right back. This is the weirdest night. Like I can't even begin to tell you. I Okay, so I just was coming down this road that I drive down every night, right? And I literally, like I got a met, like my phone lit up. So I like reached over to like turn it off. And I literally like went like that after I was just talking about that. And I look up and there's six deer crossing the road. Okay. 20 feet down, there's like another three deer walking across the road. Then I come to the end of the road and there's literally a rabbit just sitting, literally just sitting like this on the side of the road. I'm like... This is really weird. It's almost kind of like the beginning of Harry Potter. Do you remember that? I was like, this is so weird tonight. Why are all the, the animals out? Is it because of the rain? I don't know, but it's so strange. Pee-pee would love it. And um, 
I think it's awesome. My book that I my book right now that I'm finishing up has deer in it. Like they're very spiritual in the book. Um, to my main character, like when pivotal things happen, there's always like a deer there, and she can't really figure it out until the end of the book. And um, so anyway. Strange night. Do you guys believe in things like that? I don't know. I like to think of the world as a mystical, magical place. Do you guys hear this rain that I'm driving through? It was so bad earlier, the rain. I could not believe it. When Tanya and I were driving around, it was like horrible. So yes, the lesson is don't ever text and drive. That's probably one of the top five best lessons I've learned. Probably saved my life from being on YouTube. What's another great lesson I've learned from being on YouTube? Let's see. You know, I think the whole idea of like, when you fall off the horse, get right back on it is also applicable to YouTube because things are gonna happen. You're gonna post a video that nobody cares for or they don't like and they totally mistake it the wrong way or it doesn't go the way that you want it to and it's like you just have to get right back up again, you know, on the horse and just keep on riding, keep on riding. So I think that's another great lesson I learned. You know, I think another lesson I learned was that like the Maya Angelou thing, when people tell you who they are, really believe them, they know themselves much better than you do. That has been proven to me by YouTube. Um, I think another great lesson, a positive lesson is don't ever let anybody tell you what you can't do. Um, you know, so many people were Debbie Downers when I started my channel and were like, you know, oh, don't, you know, you're too old to do a booktube channel. You read all young adult books. And I was like, I'm doing it. I don't care. And booktube has been amazing to me. I'm two weeks away from being on it a year. And then um, my booktube channel is listed below. Peter likes books. If you'd like to follow it, that would mean a lot to me. Um, even if you don't like to read, I just kind of ramble on there. Um, very much like my other channels, obviously. <laughs> And then, um, you know, the other thing is that, like, when I started my vlog, people were like, um, well, I think when I started my Peter Mon channel, people were very much, like, apprehensive about watching it because it was like they only knew me from BookTube, and it was very different. And then it was like, oh, so this is who you are, so then you're not really a BookTuber when... I don't think because I make funny haha -ha videos, you know, it means, oh, there's another bunny rabbit. It, it makes me, it means that I'm any less of a book lover, you know? And then in like December, when I started throwing the idea of doing a vlog around because I wanted to vlog for a year of my life, which I'm so, I mean, like this has turned into my happiest channel. I love this channel, you know? It's like, this is the best channel. And for me, I love this channel. Um, you know, and I feel like it's been the best way to connect with you guys. Um, I feel like I've been able to show you who I really am the most on this channel, even if it's just me driving around, you know, doing vlogs or whatever. It's very much like, I think like a podcast kind of. And, um, but it's just been really endearing to me, this channel. Like I will never give this channel up. I don't care. I, I won't. I love it. And, um, so yeah, it's been very cool, you know, that I've been, have all these opportunities, but so many people were like, I mean, like even like a lot of YouTubers were like, don't start a vlog channel. It will, comp it will confuse people. You'll lose subscribers because they won't want to subscribe to yet another channel and whatever, which I, to be honest with you, I really don't understand that. I subscribe to so many people. Like if their videos come up in my feed and I don't want to watch it, I just don't watch it. You know, like I just don't really get it. You know, like, it's like, like literally, like I think I subscribed to like six new people today and I didn't even watch really their videos. There are people that I found on you now or through Twitter. So it's like, why, like, you know, two of them were, were booktubers and then like two of them were, um, people on you now and then I think the other two I found off of, I don't know, like just going through you, I don't know. But anyway, like six or seven people I followed to, or subscribed to today. I just don't understand what the big deal is, you know? It's like, 
I subscribe to anybody. I mean, like, I don't have a problem with that. Unless their content is really nasty and ugly and I just don't want it seen come up on my my subscriptions, you know, I, then I unsubscribe or I don't subscribe to them. But other than that, like, I mean, it really takes a lot to turn me off on YouTube. It really, really does. Um, like, honest to God, like, just to name somebody... Somebody that I was subscribed to that I stopped subscribing to like um like two months ago was Onision. I like just I don't find his content one bit humorous. I think he's offensive and I think he's tacky and I think that he is negative about the world. And I don't need to see that come up in my feed. And I'll tell you that there was the video that did it for me was when he was like Joking, his girlfriend was on like the other side of the TV screen or computer screen, and he was like punching her. And I just thought, this is like so sick and so sad that you're basically par making a parody of like domestic violence. I just don't think that's funny. I think there are some things where you don't go, you know. I just don't think that it's you don't go there, you know what I mean? Like, it's just I don't know. So there's a, that's a really good example of me. But like in the last year, I've probably only consciously, and I say consciously because a lot of people I've been unsubscribed to and didn't even know it. I was unsubscribed to Jenna Marbles, okay? How did that happen? Like I all of a sudden noticed I like Jenna Marbles, and this happened with Glozell Green too. <clears throat> but it happened to Glozell before it happened to Jenna Marbles. I have been diehard Glozell Green and Jenna Marbles fans for years, okay? One day I was sitting around and I was like, Jenna Marbles videos, I, she not put out videos anymore? Because I literally go through my subscriptions feed every day. And, um, I mean, I watch so many videos typically on a daily basis. I just love it. And um, I was like, I went to her channel. I was like, oh my God, I'm not subscribed to her anymore. And I had the notification bell turned on. I was like, this is crazy. You know, like YouTube, you need to fix your shit. Because I had like, then I had like nine, eight, nine or ten videos. I said eight, nine, ten. I had like ten videos of hers. I don't know how many it was. Could have been four. But anyway, that I had to go back and watch, you know, because like I had missed so many videos. And so many people tell me that. They're like, you know, I didn't realize I was unsubscribed to you. And now I have all these videos. I mean, at the rate that I put out videos, my God, if you miss three days, you're 30 videos behind or something, you know? So, it's just craziness. It just is total craziness. But, I don't understand the whole thing with, um, here, I'm going to try a different chapstick. This is the, the apple, honey crisp apple one that I like. These David's Tea chapsticks, oh my god. I think Anita sent them to me. They smell so good. They're like my favorite new chapstick. But I really like this Carmex one. Carmax? Carmax? Carmax one, too. But anyway, remember the old tubs of Carmax and you get like shit on it and hairs and everything? I hated those. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't understand the subscriber thing. Like, I just don't understand it. Like, when people, um, are like, oh no, like, I have to, like, I've watched, like, this is a comment that doesn't make sense to me, and maybe somebody can explain it to me in this, in the comment section below. They'll say, like, I've watched your videos for a while now, and I wasn't sure I wanted to subscribe or not, but finally I decided that I would subscribe. What? <laughs> like, it's just not that deep. I don't get it. Like, I don't know, do you feel like if you give a subscription to somebody that you're backing them or saying, I don't, I don't know what that means to a lot of people. If they take that more seriously than I do, I just, you know, it just isn't like that big of a deal to me, honestly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's like, it makes them happy. You know, especially if they're trying to put together content that I think, you know, is positive and good out there. I, I, I really try to especially do it for a lot of people that don't, that have like 50,000 subscribers and below, because it like really, for us out there that like get five a day or 10 a day, like it means so much. Like when you're busting your butt, you know, like on my booktube channel, like I really like, sometimes those videos take me a lot of time to put together and go to the library. I just did a scavenger hunt the other day and I thought literally I would go into the library and it would take me five minutes and I'd be done. That video took me an hour and a half to do the scavenger hunt, find all the books, check them out, bring them home. I was, you know, another hour 
of getting it all ready, filming it, which was literally the shortest part of it. it took me 15 minutes uploading it. So that's a three hour video for BookTube and I did it just because I love BookTube so much. I love books. And it was really like the universe sending you to the find the book that you're supposed to read next. That's the whole idea behind it. It's corny, but it's cute. Like it was a fun video. And, um, but that's a lot of time, you know, to put into a video. And like booktubers, especially some of them out there that have two and 300 subscribers, like they really bust their butt getting out regular content, you know, and they don't have a lot of subscribers. Like some of these guys that I call out, like Graham, the, um, at Mega Man Chief Fan and Philippe, the YA Reader, and like Dylan, um, the Reader 5. Like, these are high school kids, you guys, and they're putting out daily content, and they have less than 500 subscribers. And then I hear a lot of other people that are like, you know, complaining about how many subscribers they have and stuff, and I'm like, these are high school kids that are reading books, doing reviews, putting together like really educational, positive, creative content daily, daily. Okay, you never hear them complain about how many subscribers they have. Do they probably wish they had thousands of subscribers? I'm sure they do, you know, but they don't ever complain about it. Like ever, I've never heard them complain about it in a video, you know, and they're so thankful. Like if I mention them and they get like 10 or 20, and if I remember, I'll link their channel below. Um, I've linked it so many times. You can go back to videos I've linked or talked about the last couple days, but um, you know, every time I link their, channels and they get like you know two or three new subscribers are like thank you so much I got like you know two new subscribers that meant a lot to me I'm like how do you even know if that came from me that might not have had anything to do with me you know but they're just such nice guys and there's so many like amazing young people on YouTube you know young women and young men that are like and I'm talking about high school and early college that are really putting out like amazing positive content there are so many adults that are my age that are just doing it for fun they're doing makeup reviews and DIYs and vlogging about their life you know and all that kind of stuff by the way Letty said to me she goes so since you don't like to camp does that mean that you won't come to my cabin uh, that's totally different Letty and I saw your cabin and it's gorgeous and I would be there in a heartbeat so anyway but you know like um, I just think it's there's such beautiful fun content out there that isn't trying to be something I, I like have never been impressed with the person that tries too hard do you know what I mean like do you guys know that person that just tries so hard and um not like they're trying too hard and they just want to be accepted. Like, I appreciate that. We all do that at times, you know? We just want people to love us. We just want to be accepted. But, um, I'm talking about the person that, like, tries too hard and, like, thinks they're better than everybody else. And, you know, like, you can really tell it in their video content because it's just not very sincere. And I've never understood with people like that. Like, with YouTube, it's like, if you get on YouTube, no matter who you are, like people always ask me like, what should I do with my channel? Just be yourself, just totally be yourself, okay? When I see YouTubers at start and they're like this, hi, my name is Peter and uh, I don't know what I'm gonna, okay, first of all, that's fear of talking into the camera and putting your voice out into the world. I totally understand that. That will go away with time, okay? That will go away with time. But be yourself. Don't try to be something that you're not, you know? If you're, you know, a teenage girl and you come from a middle income family, you aren't buying $5,000 purses. Let's just be for real, okay? <clears throat> Don't try to act like you're gonna do those kind of reviews of those things unless you're really interested in it. And then if you are really interested in it, just get up there and say, listen, I don't have the money to buy these kind of purses. I wish I did, but I don't. And I love this stuff and it makes me so much, it's so much fun for me to like look through like fashion magazines and wish should I have those clothes and I was sitting on the front row of like a fashion runway, but I don't have that and I don't know people that do that. And so, but I do want to talk about it on here. So I'm going to talk about it on here. That's sincere. Okay. That I love. That sincerity of the soul, you know, that's that soul that's so beautiful, you know, that it's just, it is so beautiful. I love that. And people not trying to be something that they're not. And I feel like for a lot of us, especially as you get older, you realize that's the real, that's the real lesson and meaning to life is becoming true to yourself. You're always going to care what somebody thinks about you. Okay. Listen. Listen, 
I have lived on, I, 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 I'm not going against anybody that anybody says when they said, I don't really give a shit what anybody says. That's bullshit. You care what one person, there's, there's one person out there that you care what they think, okay? At least one person. And I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm not the person that, I'm not, I don't care what anybody thinks, okay? I think when people say that, they're trying to convince themselves they believe that. But I don't believe that to be true. And I'm not a bullshit artist. So, you know, like, I do care what people think. I care less what people that I don't know think. And my mother used to say to me, don't value the opinion of those people you don't value to begin with, right? What's interesting is when I've talked about that in vlogs, people have said to me, well, how do you know if you value that person's opinion or not? Well, I value my husband's opinion on some things. Not all, but on some. I value my cousin Caroline's opinion. I value my good friend Tanya's opinion. I value my father's opinion. I value my sponsor's opinion, you know, but past that about personal decisions in my life of who I am as a human being, I don't really care what people think. I mean, I'm talking about if I'm going to wear my red kids with my outfit today, if you don't like them and you're going to look at me strange, like I'm at a point in my life where I do not care if my red kids, I don't have red kids, vans, my red vans, kids. I don't care about that stuff anymore. I really don't, okay? Or I wouldn't wear a pink trunker hat all over the cross of the, the middle of America. But there are things I do care about. Like, I do care if, like, you guys think that I offended you. You know, I have met a lot of you through the internet and talked to you regularly because you follow my videos or I see your comments or whatever. And, and it would it would hurt me if I knew that I had hurt you, you know? So I do care what you think. And I can't sit here and say, I don't, you know? And it would, you know, I do care if you guys enjoy the content that I make because I put a lot of time and energy into it and I want you guys to enjoy it. I want you guys to get something out of it and say, hey, yeah, I relate to that or thank you for talking about that or wow, I never thought of it that way or no, Peter, you pissed me off. Like, let me tell you, let's have a discussion about this, an educated discussion, you know? Like, it does matter to me what you guys think about my video content. Now, my dad, it doesn't matter to me what he thinks about my video content because he doesn't understand this anyway. So like, and it's not because he's old because he understands a lot, but I just don't, he doesn't understand this. So if he would say to me like, you know, whatever, I'd be like, like Alex always says to me, you need to edit your videos, okay? He's like, you need to do higher edited videos. Well, I said, that's part of who I am. That's part of what I do. I don't edit. They don't care. They like my videos for, the people that like my videos like my videos, okay? They don't care how high quality edited they are. That's not who I am. They know that. They appreciate that. If I changed it tomorrow, it would seem fake. It would seem disingenuous. I love my husband. He, it, that doesn't mean anything to me. It doesn't hurt my feelings when he says that. Does that make sense? But, like, if you guys tomorrow started coming to me and saying, we can't watch your videos, and Alex doesn't watch most of my videos anyway, but if you guys came to me tomorrow and said, we can't watch your videos because they're so, like, choppy and out of focus and you don't edit and you're always in the shadows in your vlogs, which I am always. <laughs> Shadow. Steve Jobs. But anyway, you know, then I would start thinking about that and think, okay, maybe I need to do this. You know, it's like why I, when I ask you guys shorter or longer vlogs and like 80% of you said, keep them long. I kept them long. That's why this one's almost 50 minutes long. It will be 50 minutes here in just a second, which means it's time for me to sign off because see, I love you guys and I listen to you and I don't want to upset you, you know? So, cause what you say to me does mean something to me. I'm just not going to act like it does, but me wearing, you know, overalls and whatever I choose to wear out into the world. Like if people look at me strange, Hey, I'm a weirdo and I accept that. You know what? And I like being a weirdo. It's okay today. You know, that stuff I don't really care about. Those that mind don't matter. And those that matter don't mind, you know, anyway, I love you guys so much. I hope you are having a wonderful Sunday and, um, I will talk to you later. Remember, do something fun today. Cause you're on borrowed time. Bye.